Monday, Monday, so good to me. Monday morning, it was all I hoped it would be. Hey, do you remember that song? Who are the people? Was it Mama Cass? Does that sound right? Something like that. But every Monday, of course, I wake up. Monday, Monday. <laughs> so I hope it's good for all of you, too. Of course, you'll see this is a snippet, so it'll probably be Friday. Who knows? But it's Monday here now, and I wanted to point something out. Let me take a sip of, and then put it down. I always try to be real quiet for you, Cherry Cherry. You know, my friend, my best friend Philly calls me Joy Joy. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun to be named Cherry Cherry? But Joy Joy is good too. So I wanted to show you what's been happening since my last snippet. Um, looky here at my list. Remember it stopped at a season in blue? I had to add blue barn, two patriotic quilts, and the Christmas sleigh block of the month. <laughs> it's a good thing I have a lot of paper. I can't believe how many quilts I started last year and um, how many I didn't finish. <laughs> but I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm kind of going to make myself have a plan. I don't know when we're going to go back somewhere, anywhere on our vacation. Hold on, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> I know, Lori, you said, we don't care if you sneeze, everybody sneezes. Well, everybody doesn't sneeze like I do. You know that story of the big bad wolf? He huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down. <laughs> well, if I don't get away from the camera, I'm liable to blow it over and knock the lights down. So anyway, I know, I know, I don't know what it is. Some days it's awful and some days I'm fine all day long. So we don't care about that. I'll be back this afternoon at some point and I'm working on the C top now for the ABC Challenge, and it's called Cali. It's a Cali cardigan or a Cali coat, and I found the wildest fabric in the world to make it with. <laughs> I don't know, maybe a little bit too wild, but, uh, you know, I'm a granny, and uh, if you wear some wild-looking thing, you know, people will be looking at it, and maybe they won't see all your chins and your wrinkles and everything. <laughs> I'm almost too embarrassed to give you the tip I'm about to give you. How long have I been sewing? How many pieces of fabric have I cut out? How many patterns have I made? You will not believe what I did. I'm making my C ABC challenge top. It's called the Cali Cardigan. I had both fronts cut out. I had the back cut out. I had the two fronts sewn to the back at the shoulders. Then I decided I was going to try the collar. And you know, I hate collars. <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe this one will be different. Actually, it's worse. So anyway, I cut out the collar. I put it on. I decided I didn't like where it was. So I made new ones, and I had to cut out some more fabric. Guess what I cut the fabric out of? I just saw this. I mean, I could just cry. <laughs> Guess what I cut the fabric out of? <laughs> Can you see? <sighs> this is a front. <laughs> Here's a shoulder. This was the front. This is the other front. I was marking the bus dart. And I thought, oh, let me mark the bus dart on the other side. <laughs> I found the other side, and this is all that's left of it. Oh! I, think, I think I'm going backwards in my skills. <laughs> There's maybe, just maybe, enough to cut another front. I think this is how styles really happen. Somebody does something this dumb, and so then they just cut out like a plain black and put it over here on this side and, and then they call it a style. <laughs> oh, I have to go back and try to fix this. <laughs> okay. Thank God 
there was just a big enough piece left to make another front. <sighs> so this is the Cali cardigan. I love my piece of fabric. It's a real odd piece of fabric, but I love the print of it. And I have a lot of shirts this color, so I just happen to be wearing this today. So this is partial collar. This will have this all the way around, the whole way, all the way here, 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 up around the back and all the way down the front, see? So you'll have one here and one here, and so they'll kind of come together, see, in the middle. But right now I'm fighting with the neck. The collar is just too high for my neck, so I'm working on that. But my tip, do you know what my tip is? Yes, Joy, we all know what your tip is. <laughs> Make sure your garment pieces are not laying on the table with your cutters and the fabric that you're cutting. Once you cut your garment pieces out, get them away. Go put them on your long arm like I do. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Thank goodness. When I took this piece out of my stash, I thought, oh my gosh, there's so much of it. Well, there's not so much of it now. There is nothing left. <laughs> oh, I got to go fix salmon loaf and a white sauce to go on top of it. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Good Wednesday. Almost noon. <laughs> I finished my Cali coat. Now, it's time to put your B garment on the ABC challenge, but I've just finished my C garment. I have to be ahead. I cannot stand to wait till the last minute and then have to hurry, 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 get something done. And it's a good thing because this has taken me one half day, one whole day, and this morning to make this coat, jacket, cardigan, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I'm not super satisfied with the fit because I think it's kind of got a duck tail in the back. I don't know what that's about, but I worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. It took me so many hours, not because it's a hard pattern. It's not a hard pattern. The problem is I have a hard body to fit because I'm so little up here from here up my neck my head, um, my shoulders, I didn't have a problem with. They landed right on. But I ended up with the collar clear out. First, it was clear up halfway up the back of my head. The collar was halfway up the back of my head. You were supposed to cut it seven inches wide. Fold it in half. No, 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 no. I ended up cutting two inches off, so I had five inches folded in half. And then a half inch seam. So I ended up with just two inches two maybe two and a half let me see five folded in half is two and a half less than half is two so I ended up with two inches and you're supposed to have three because yeah let me see three and a half three and a half is seven yeah so you're supposed to have three inches so mine's an inch lower now because I cut off two inches and you fold it in half so I struggled with that struggled with that <laughs> And then I ended up having to make the back neck short. I had to take the shoulders in up here next to my neck. And I had to take it in center seam all the way down the back um, to make the back neck smaller. Otherwise, the collar stood way out like, you know, the flying nun or something. <laughs> it just looked crazy. That's why I never make coats. That's why I don't own very many of them. They just always fit me funny. So what do you think? You see my little notches? This is supposed to be the exciting part of the Cali is these notches up here. And it ought to be the exciting part because, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, did I mess it up? <laughs> also, I did the back neck different. She has a notch right here in the center back of the collar. And I thought, I have a hard enough time with collars without putting a notch back there. I figured they'd, you know, be pointing sideways or fall down or something. I don't know what they would have done. And I want pockets. Now, I have <laughs> just a mess of chunks of the fa this fabric left on the floor in there. But if I can find enough of it to put patch pockets, I do want to do that. Maybe just one. But then again, maybe not. Let me see if I can put my sleeves up. <gasps> I hadn't even tried. Oh, look at that. Now look at that. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to be able to make your clothes? Wonderful. So now 
I've made the Bella and I've made the Bobby. So I did two B's. I have to figure out which one I want to show. Because I think the new, the B contest starts today. You know, each one goes for two weeks. And I don't know who won the last one. I don't know how she's going to announce that. But um, I, I don't know if I'm going to do the Bella or the Bobby. One or the other. You can only do one. And I made two. So then this will be the next challenge, which is a C. So I'm up to the D's. So I've got to pick a D. You want to help me pick a D? Let's go look at the D's. I design it yourself. This is our first book. And so the D's. I have my little cheat sheet to look at here. Um, the D's are page 273, Derby Diva Jacket. So I could choose the Derby Diva. And what else is there that's a D? So there's this designer knockoff ribbon jacket. You can't see it very good. You can always go over to fitnicesystem.com. Oh, let's see what's next. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, can I ever do this one? Just go downstairs and get 25 of my tops out of my closet. <laughs> Probably mostly nightgowns. 137, dolman sleeve duty. Oh my goodness. Can I ever do the dolman sleeve duty? And I've got a pattern cut out. And next is my next other favorite, the Dondi. We all remember the Dondi, Dondi duty. Look at the ladies at the bottom with their Dondi. The Dondi is just the simple, simple t-shirt with a collar. The collar is the Dondi part. So easy. Dolman sleeve jacket, dress for comfort, Dondi or Dolman. Okay, so that's this book. Let's see what's in this one. In this book, there's the Dakota. The Dakota. She uses glue for this stuff. So here's the Dakota, and the little triangle goes in the bottom. In case, you know, you need to cover up your fluff, which I certainly do. Oh, and then I could choose the Diana, which is lace over something. And since I can't stand lace, and I don't think I look good in lace, <laughs> I'm not going to be making the Diana. The Dakota Dolman Dondi. That's my choices. Dakota Dolman Dondi. So it'll be one of those. Anyhow, this is my C entry. <laughs> so good Thursday morning. Enjoy here. Yes, I had to show you. <laughs> I worked all day yesterday on this jacket too. I had it all done. Jerry said he really liked it. I had it hanging in the closet. And I thought, you know, I'd really like to have some pockets. And I only had these little scraps on the floor. I mean, a little. And, uh-oh, I have to go change the bread. I'll be right back. I found out something. I have been having issues with her directions not being very complete. Well, I found out that the written directions <laughs> are different than the directions in the book. The ones that you buy on her website are, they seem to be, they seem to be more thorough because I printed out one of the actual patterns that you would get if you just bought the pattern and it showed all the things that I couldn't see in the book. On that blouse that had the pleat in the front, when I made it, I sewed it down from here to about here to make it stay. But I didn't want to show it, you know, as my entry for the ABC challenge because I thought, well, you're not supposed to sew the pleat down. Well, guess what? You are supposed to sew the pleat down. Uh, the other one that I made, this one, I printed out the instructions on it much clearer. Showed the notches. Showed what I had before showed no notch back here. And even though I figured out you were supposed to have one back there, I didn't put one because I was afraid it would fall down on me or something. But I worked on this again yesterday, decided to pick up my little scraps from the floor and see if I could cut two pockets big enough to put on this jacket because I really like it. Number one, you can wear it with turquoise or you can wear it with white. Or as you can see today, I have it with black. And I have on my Louise cutting pants that I made. Wonderful, wonderful pattern. Oh, right now I can't think of the name of it. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put it here or here or somewhere. Now, I'll tell you something. If you buy a cutting line designs pattern, 
you will have the best instructions ever written on the entire planet. You will not have a problem understanding what you're supposed to do. Now, it just so happened that Philly and I went to Tulsa. There was a store there back then called Cloth Merchants, and these two ladies named Debbie and Nancy owned it. And they invited Louise Cutting to come there and teach a class. And so, we were making these pants. And Louise took the paper pants pattern and she figures out how much you need, you around your flat butt and your tummy and all that stuff. And then if it's too big around for you, I don't have something to show you. But play like, this is the pants pattern. She just takes a tuck all the way from the front top to the bottom of the pant. Just brings the entire pant leg in, half inch or whatever. And so these pants fit me perfectly. I've made red ones and I've made these black ones. And they are very nice. And then I put her elastic. You remember her elastic you put in? It stretches to the moon. And you can sew over it and sew over it. So I've got like five rows of stitching there. And then I've got my Melissa Morell half tuck. You know you're supposed to do a half tuck these days. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, fighting a runny nose this morning. Well, I'm fighting a runny nose <laughs> every morning. But anyway. So, Louise Cutting. Um, what was I, did I get, oh no, I was talking about the half tuck. Now the half tuck's nice if you're covering it up with a sweater or a jacket. But I don't know about the half tuck if you don't have a jacket on over it. Let's look and see. <clears throat> when I edit this, I'll go, oh my gosh, that looks terrible. So what you do is you just tuck it in in the very front. And then you blouse it. But then you leave it out. See how long it is? You leave it out the rest of the way around your body. So, everybody that I have seen that, Melissa, I think her name's Melissa Morell, and I can't remember the name of her channel. Oh, joy. I showed it to you in one of my, I'll show it again too. Name of Melissa Morell's channel on YouTube. And you can watch her do half tucks. But you have to have some to, to flip out, see, is the trick. And I really like it under the jacket, especially when I had blue on top and black on the bottom yesterday, because it, it's, a, it's kind of a fake waist. You know, it makes you look like you have one when you don't. <laughs> but I don't know how it looks without the jacket over it, so y'all be the judge. Okay? So, um, somebody asked me, somebody asked me some, <laughs> I get these comments, you know, and I had four comments, maybe more about my snippets. Most of them were, we love your snippets, love your snippets, but I had two that said, your snippets are too long, I don't like to watch them for this long, and two more people said, I wish your snippets were longer. <laughs> so, <laughs> you just can't please all the people, can you? You just can't do it. But let me tell you something about too long. If my video is too long, stop it. Stop it at 15 minutes. When you go back, if you go back and you look it up again, it will still be right there at that mark. And you can watch it another 15 minutes. Shut her down. Put your computer away. Go to bed. Go shopping. Whatever. Come back. Turn that same video back on and it will be there at the mark you stopped it there. So, if they're too long, just do that. There's a lot of videos that are too long for me. I do not like to listen to someone yak, 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 yak forever, and they're going to show me how to make something, but they talk for 15 minutes. I just go ahead 15 minutes and say, okay, show me how to make it. <laughs> so I'm like that too. I don't want to just sit there forever. I want somebody to get to the point. But my snippets don't have a point. My snippets are just whatever I happen to be doing for the day. Now, I had somebody ask me, about this quilt. I've had several people ask me about this quilt. Edita Sitar owns Laundry Basket Quilts. LaundryBasketQuilts.com She has two heart patterns. This is one of them. I have both of them and I'm going to make the other one now that it's February. Jerry and I were married 48 years yesterday. And Cyburns came up to me and he said, I am so glad I married you. <laughs> I said, well, I'm certainly glad you married me too, let me tell you. So this is one of her heart patterns, and I made it last year. 
I have the other one. Now the other one has paste uh, stripes. You use a uh, jelly roll and you just sew them together and it makes a heart. And so it's different, but it's another cute heart quilt and I want to make it too. Okay, so that answers that question. One of you said, I would like to try the flaxseed bread you make. Send me the recipe. So I'm going to show you the book it's in. Here's the book. I need to make something besides flaxseed. I've made that. This will be the fourth time I've made the flaxseed bread. And I've got an entire book of recipes. So this is the book it's in. If Amazon has it, I'll put it in my Amazon store. Then you can buy it there and I'll make a whole penny. Yes, I will. <laughs> so far, I don't know if I've, I've made any pennies. My thing from them is usually just an explanation as to how it works, and it's not even any money. <laughs> so here is the flaxseed bread. Now, I want you to notice that even this has screwy, even this has screwy instructions. This is a small loaf, medium loaf, big loaf. This loaf says use milk. This one says use milk. This one says use water. What the heck? So, yes, the last time I made it, and today, I used half water, half milk. So, <laughs> I figured that wouldn't mess it up too bad. But we love it. It's very good. Now, let me tell you a little tip on that. Um, if you buy flaxseed, it tells you on the bag to keep it in the refrigerator. So when you take a half cup of flaxseed out of the bag that's been in the refrigerator, the flaxseed's going to be very, very cold. And you don't want to put very, very cold flaxseed in your bread maker. You don't want to put anything cold in there. It tells you to melt the butter and then let it cool. Well, what I do is I put the flaxseed in the plastic measuring cup, put it in a little dish or something, and put it in the microwave, and I microwave it like 20 seconds, and it warms it up. It doesn't cook it or anything, and it works fine. I've done it twice. So that's just a joy tip. You know, if you want to put yours in there cold, you just go right ahead and do it. But this is a really cool book, Orange Cranberry Bread. Oh, yes! Fragrant orange bread. Oatmeal apple bread. Oh, pineapple coconut bread. Oh, oh my heavens! Oh my heavens, I want to make all of these. Pineapple coconut, where is that one? Orange nut, I've already lost it. Orange cranberries, page 111. This is a really nice cookbook, y'all. I'll put it in my Amazon store. Orange cranberry. Oh, that has got banana whole wheat. I've got three bananas down there. I wonder how many bananas it takes. Oh, I have got enough bananas. Oh my goodness. I may, when this one gets done in about an hour, I may make the banana whole wheat bread. What I do is I make the loaf of bread. I let it cool. You know, it, for the first time I made let me pull out this half tuck. It bugs me. Uh, the first time I made it, I have pockets in my pants too. Um, what was I going to say? Does anyone know? <laughs> oh, the first time I made just a normal loaf of white bread. I took it out of the bread maker and I tried to slice it right away. Well, it just crumbled apart, fell apart. So you have to let it cool for a couple hours. But I bought this slicer dicer wooden thingy. I'll put it in my uh, Amazon store too if it's not there. And it works pretty good. Uh, and so you can slice it. So what I do is I let it cool. I slice the whole loaf. Then I put it in some bread bags that I bought from Amazon. I'll put those on Amazon too. I gotta write this down. Um, and I use two of them. I wrap it in one bag and make it real tight and fold it under. Then I put it in another bag and put the twisty and I freeze it. And so every morning Jerry and I, and since it's, it's a dense bread and it's a big piece, um, we just get one piece out of the freezer and then we toast it in the toaster. And what I do is I put it down in the toaster and I put it on four. And so I totally toast it. Well, part of it sticks up out of the toaster because it's so tall. So when it's done on four, remember it's frozen. I take it out and I flip it over upside down to the other slot. And I cook it for like two more, two or three more. But while I'm toasting it, I put my little plate, not paper, a real plate on top of the toaster and it heats the dish. 
And so then I take the dish down and put my slice of bread and then I butter it and then it keeps it warm. That's what I do for anybody who cares. Okay? So, a little tip of the day. Boy, I don't ever talk about cooking, do I? And so since I've been cooking lately, cooking more than usual, um, you know, I'm down there making the bread or, or doing the Instant Pot or whatever. And so I started organizing my cookbook cupboard in the kitchen. And I found this old cookbook. Look at this. This old cookbook. And it's stiff. It's like cardboard. Can you tell? It's cardboardy. See, it's thick. Thick pieces. Really nice. And they're kind of coated so you can wash it. I don't know how old this is. Let me see if I can find a date. Do you have a date, Mitch? No, it just starts out with the recipe. Now, of course, this is all made with Campbell's soup. Well, I love Campbell's soup. It was $7.97. And I don't... Oh! August of 2009. So, I mean, I was born then, right? So, either that or it was August of 1909. <laughs> but I want to show you. I got it out because I was organizing and I thought, oh, I wonder if I want to make any of these with my soup. Either that or throw it away or put it in the Goodwill bag. So, I had chicken breast thought out the day I found this. And so, I found this recipe in here for a boneless chicken breast halves. It's called chicken mozzarella. It is delicious. Quite Italian. I made a big salad and we put all the garden dressing on it. But Jerry loved it. He said, I hope you'll make this again. This is really good. So I thought I'd show you that one too. I don't know what that is over there, but I made this one. Can you see Bumblebee? <laughs> so it's Thursday and I think I better end this snippet video because it's going to be too long for some people and probably too short for other people. <laughs> oh and I want to answer one more question. Well, one of the question was a comment. I'm telling you I'm having a hard time talking today. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. I won't cut that one out and then you can see what I have to deal with, okay? I have to cut out half a dozen of those every video. So I finished my jacket and um, love it. I just love it. Um, it goes with white, black, or blue, as I said earlier. So I'm very happy with my jacket. May make another one. But um, many of you commented on my blue with my white and blue Bella top and said the back should have been solid. Yes, that's right. That's why I threw it in the garbage. It was supposed to be solid. But since the book shows it to be cut out of a dolman sleeve, there wasn't any way to make the back solid unless I made the sleeve. One fabric on the front and a different one on the back and cut it down the middle. And I didn't want to do that. So, yes, it's wrong. <laughs> and somebody said, those colors don't match. Yes, they do. They were meant to go together. They were bought to go together. They were next to each other in the store. Same kind of fabric, same weight, and they match perfect. But the video, I mean, I'm wearing black. I don't know what it's going to look like when you see it. And this is turquoise black and white. And I don't know why that blue fabric didn't come out matching totally right. But it does match perfect, just for the person who said that. So, I think the B is just now starting the B contest. And we don't know who won the A's yet. But the B part is starting now. So I think I'm going to make another Bella. Only this time I'm going to make it the right way. And I can use... Um, my pattern that I used to make this with to do it. Because see, this has set in sleeves. Ta da! <laughs> yes. Oh, this is really nice. It's, it's kind of heavy. Can you see it's heavy? Heavy. And it's a. Um, my friend said, I think that's corduroy. And I don't think it is, but maybe it is. I didn't think corduroy could be um, stretchy. See? I don't know. Whatever it is, I'm, I really like the way it finally turned out after three days of working on it. <laughs> so I want to redo the Bella. I'm up to D, and I told you earlier that I want to make a D, and I don't know what D I decided on, but I'll make some kind of a D. I just love challenges, 
and it doesn't matter if I win or not. It's just, um, I just like participating in challenges because, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, it's like, even though you're completely alone and there's nobody here with me, it's like you're doing something with somebody. Oh, and then this morning I got an email from, I think it was from Baby Lock, and they gave three different ways that you could sew for charity. And I definitely want to start doing that. One of them was pillowcase dresses. I don't think I want to make pillowcase dresses. I think they're kind of goofy and I don't like making the ties at the top. I would rather make a dress that actually, you know, had a sleeve and went over your head and was a dress. Um, they had Quilts of Valor, and I don't want to do Quilts of Valor. I'm not sure that the men that receive a Quilts of Valor quilt even care about it. They, you know, do they use it? Do they hang it up? Do they remember they got it? I don't know. The man that I know, you know, unless it's got cats on it like Burnside's quilts. <laughs> and then there was another one that I want to do. And it was purses. And it's purses for the girls someplace in Africa. These very, very poor children. I wish they'd just send me about a dozen of those kids. Oh, I would totally take care of them. But, um, they, the girls, um, they're making purses for the girls to carry their uh, monthly supplies in because I guess the girls don't have a way to keep those things with them or something uh, and so it's a goes over your shoulder purse and they like them colorful and cute and then the girls put their sanitary things in there to take to school and stuff so I think I'd like to do that you know I've got a little bit of fabric I could do it with <laughs> We shall see. Oh, and another thing, pillowcases. Now, I've done pillowcases before. I made a hundred pillowcases in the past for a lady that was doing there. Her name was Rhonda. And I made a hundred pillowcases for her. And they went to some hospital where they treat children and the children have to be there for quite a while and they give them a pillowcase. And so I made a hundred pillowcases for that years ago. So different things you can do if you want to make things and help somebody while you're doing it. I'm going to let you go. I'll be back next week. Bye for now.